I'm fired up. I'm fired up for this last practice today. Um, kind of just clean up some things, put in uh, the nuts and bolts over the last 10 practices. And um, you, you want to see what it looks like. And I know these guys are so tired of beating each other up the, the last two months that it's going to be great to play against somebody else. And not just anybody else. We're playing against grown men. We're playing against pros. We're playing against ex-NBA players. Guys who've been drafted. I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. What do, you, what do you hope to get out of this overall? I mean, could you tell, take us through some of the things, whether uh, program building, uh, you know, on the court, that sort of thing? You know what? I, I really think the locker room is where it starts. And I think when you're going to be together for a solid week, uh, every minute of every day, you hope that they come together as, as teammates, as brothers, as, as you would hope. Um, because I really truly believe you went in the locker room before you went out here on the court. So that's the number one goal. You know, everybody says, oh, it's the freshman, the freshman. And I said, yeah, but Tim Frazier's also been out for nine months. So it's going to be good to see him, you know, go against some big time players and see where his talent level is and his speed is and his timing is. And that's going to be, that's going to be critical. And then, then I would tell you, you know, we've developed Ross and DJ and Brandon and Donovan and the freshmen all year, all summer long. So you want to see where they are. So it's going to be a nice barometer of where we are and things to come. I'm not going to hold too much stock into it because I want to play different lineups, um, different guys out there, see what they can do. And especially, you know, I might not be coaching the score all the time. I might be coaching the players and just trying to get them better over this next you know, eight days. What do you tell the guys about the difference between European style of play and college style of play? Well, basically, I tell them we're playing against men. I mean, you're not playing against 18 to 23 year olds. I mean, you're playing from 23 to 35 year olds. And they're wily veterans. It's going to be a physical match. And uh, officiating is probably going to be very difficult as well for us. Um, you got to understand that. But they also, really good execution over there. I mean, I have a European tape that I just watched about a month ago, and I thought it was fabulous, some of the things that they do over there. Uh, we're going to have to get used to some of the rules, you know, the goaltending stuff, and uh, no backcourt, eight seconds over half court, which shouldn't be a problem with Tim at the point, but you never know if they put some pressure on us. Um, so it presents some challenges. However, I, I think this is going to be a real nice test for our guys. And the other thing is that I haven't mentioned, we're going to see some culture. We're going to see some amazing areas that these guys, you know, if they don't make the NBA, at least they can say, hey, I've been to Belgium, I've been to London, I've been to Paris, I've been to different places. So I know what, I know what it's like over there. Probably the biggest thing about this trip, besides taking the trip itself, is the ability to have these 10 practices beforehand. Did you get everything you wanted to get out of that as far as a processes and rotations and everything yeah for me I wanted to put like you know you got to put certain things in to compete on you can't put everything in because you only have 10 days I can't do everything in 10 days you just can't and the freshmen their minds their heads would be spinning so I think we got in like I said everything that we need to get in to be competitive and the 10 days are right now the freshmen know all the drills Alan Roberts knows all the drills now this is gonna be great for Alan too he's got one year with us so he's ahead of the curve now versus all the other fifth-year guys that are out there. So that's great for us. Um, but the 10 days have been invaluable. I'll tell you what, this team, they compete. They, they, get, they get after each other. I mean, we've had a couple scrums, a couple, uh, couple battles out there. A lot of, uh, you know, Tim and DJ. I think to Tim had 12 stitches, DJ had 16. So uh, it's like October. You know, guys are fighting for minutes right now, which is really cool to see. And I don't have to go crazy to get them to do it. They're doing it on their own. How did the stitches come about? What happened? DJ was just trying to come off a ball screen. Tim jumped the ball screen, and they just butted heads. But you're not playing. They're, they're playing extremely hard right. to be, you know, for Tim to get there quickly and DJ to want to fire off. I mean, it was last week in a scrimmage. They really got after it. Do you, can you put a percentage on where Tim is physically compared to where he was before the injury? Is he 100, 90? He just, he just did vertical testing and did a lot of testing in the weight room. He was fine. He hit, he hit all his numbers. So physically, you know, he's 100%. It's, I would say mentally he's probably 85, 90. I think you're going to see. I'm going to see exactly where he is come Tuesday night when we play a really, really good team. Do you feel he's – Monday night. 
Do you feel he's ahead of the game in terms of you know, physically? Because a lot of times that injury will take longer for people. I, I, I do. I feel like we, had, you know, we met for breakfast this morning. I felt like he was in a great place. Feels pretty good about uh, you know his physical, uh, the Achilles itself, and his body in general. Um, look, I, I watched guys get hurt, ACLs, MCLs, and they're never the same right away. This guy looks like he's already back to me. Now his timing's going to be a problem, slowing himself down because he's out for nine months. You're like getting out there and you, you know, just want to go crazy. You just got to slow him down, and, and he will as, as the season progresses. You talked about numbers, uh, numbers wise, with Tim and the vertical. Uh, how's he? What's he like? Change of direction wise, and like yeah, on the court. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Great um, defensive slides. Great. We're doing closeout drills. He's doing great. I mean, he's doing everything I expect him to do in October and November. So, uh, so far, you know, so good. Change of speeds. Doing really well. Um, you know, I don't see it. Nothing pops because I'm watching him very closely. You guys have to understand that. And nothing has popped out. And I watched every film. We filmed all 10 practices. I watched all 10. And I'm like even really dialed in to try to see if I can see anything. I don't see anything. So there's no, you're not taking any precautions with him in terms of I might playing limit his minutes. Some, right. I might limit his right. minutes. I'm not playing a 40. <laughs> I would Yeah. because I'm a competitor and I want to <laughs> win. But I have to be smart. And uh, you know, we'll probably try to keep him between you know, 20 and 30. Do I recall you saying at one point that you hadn't been to Europe before either? You are this correct. Is, yeah. First time. What's it going to be like, do you think, for you personally to go over and check things I'm out? I'm a history guy, so I love it. I can't wait. I can't wait to get over there, and I can't wait to explore and see all the different um, architectures. And, uh, I, I just think it's going to be made in cathedrals, and I've never been to Paris. I know I'm a you know, tourist person, but I want to go see the Eiffel Tower, and I want to do that stuff. So I want to go to London. I want to see the, the royalty. I want to see all that stuff. Is your family involved at all, or can't you? is that difficult you know what? to do? Uh, my daughter is one, so she's just too young right. to take over. And I, I, My wife, I really wanted her to come, but the kids are just too young. And did you, did you guys run into any sort of logistical problems with passports and everything else? Because no, we're ahead of the game. We got all that done this spring. Uh, we made sure we talked to parents and uh, made sure everybody had a passport. So, knock on. Knock on <laughs> at 11.30 tomorrow, everybody better have their passport, including myself. And what's the travel itinerary from here? Can you take us through how you're getting over there? What, so, you... tomorrow, we'll get on the bus here at 11.30. We'll travel down to Philadelphia. We've got to get there two, two and a half hours prior. Um, you know, check in. We'll get there at 7 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning. And... Um, uh, pretty much lounge around a little bit because it's been a crazy day, a lot of travel. Uh, we'll have gym time, get some shots up, get our feet under us a little bit. And there's supposed to be a little bit of a, you know, a celebration of us coming to you know, Belgium. And, uh, so it should be cool. And then Monday we play. You know, we're doing some sightseeing on Monday, but we play Monday. We're doing some sightseeing on Tuesday. Play Tuesday. Uh, I believe we're going to Paris on Wednesday. Uh, I think we're going to Holland on Thursday, if I'm correct. We also play Thursday. And then Friday we go to London, and then Saturday we're back. Talk about How about that? <laughs> huh? Organized in detail. Let's go, Matty. <laughs> Talked about uh, getting a chance to, to sightsee and look at architecture and the culture. Um, guys in the team, is it going to be like structured things all the time, or will they have chances to explore on their own, or is it always going to be? There will be some structure. Um, uh, we're going to travel in packs. You, you know, we don't want anybody going off on their own. That would not be a good idea. Um, but we're going to get to Paris, and you know what I'm going to say? I'll see it this time. You know, I want to give them the freedom to hang out with one another and see different things. And, you know, they're more than welcome to come with me. I don't have a problem with that. I would love to do it with them, actually. But I also want to give them some rope to go explore and check some things out. So. And do they get travel money, or how does that stuff work? I mean, yeah, they, they get, like they'll a get, a, get a meal, a little stipend yeah. here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll do some team things. Last time the program left the country, they went to Canada, and they came back and won the NIT. Um, not to put that kind of expectation on you off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. But, uh, I mean, how much of this point, this trip is about what you think this team can do and getting them together and ready um, earlier, and how much of it is just being able to go to out of the country as soon as you could? I would say all of that. Um, you know, I wanted to do it for Tim. Um, just because of the injury, I wanted to get him back playing in some real games before we actually get there. Because typically, when with injuries of that magnitude, it might take him till January, February. And I don't, you know, for him and us, I don't know if we have that type of, of time. 
and then it just helps out Alan Roberts, you know, being a fifth year, getting acclimated to all the things that we do. I think it can really help us. And then the freshmen. So, and then I think the bigs. You know, we haven't talked about our bigs, Brandon Taylor, Donovan, and Julian. I think this is going to help them um, mature a little bit, grow up a little bit, um, speed up the process a little bit. Even though we know it's a slow process, it should. It should help us. So all that went into the thought process. And then being able to do it after four years. And, you know, fortunately, because of uh, our alumni uh, association and the Hoops Club, we have enough funds to, to go. So I felt like it was the right time. The timing was right. And I feel like in year three, we're about to, you know, we're about to flip it a little bit. We're about to, this thing's about to go head in a, in a much better direction. Yeah, you touched on the culture over there a couple of times, how this trip is more than about basketball. Have you taken a moment or will you take a moment just to talk to the guys to say, you know, while we're here, you know, slow down, take a look around, just sort of absorb everything that you can? No, no question. Um, I'm going to talk to them about embracing. Uh, maybe this isn't the cool thing to do. <laughs> maybe you'd rather just lay in your hotel room, but you, you need to experience uh, what the world is, what's out here. Um, you know, come in here with eyes wide open and really start to take in what's that, you know, the culture and the environments that you're going in. Because the United States is a great place. It's an amazing place. But when you're not, when you don't go outside it, you really don't, you don't really uh, treasure it as much as you should. And uh, fortunately, I shouldn't say, I've never been to Europe, I've been to Argentina, and I've been to Africa. Um, but every time I came home, I was kissing the ground. You know, I'm proud to be an American, just so you know. I'm glad I live in the United States. I think sometimes we, we need to do that every now and then just to get a refresher.